What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to show some calculator tricks for AP Calculus. Now, the first thing you should know how to do is reset a calculator. You press second memory is by the plus sign here, and then you press seven for reset. One is all RAM, and then two to reset this thing. The benefit of this is if your calculator is ever out of whack, sometimes resetting it just puts everything back to normal, and then it could fix your problem. So now we press Y equals, and the next thing I want to show is how to type in fractions. So you're going to press alpha y equals enter. And let's say I want to look at a rational function like x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Now, the benefit of using alpha y equals enter is I can't tell you how many times I've had students type it in like this. And their graph or their table comes out different because they didn't put parentheses over the top and bottom here. But if you use alpha y equals enter, is way more forgiving and it's way more accurate when you're typing things in. So now the next thing we should look at is how to adjust the table. So when we press second graph, notice our table is all integer values of x. But in calculus, sometimes you need to plug in decimals, you need to plug in pi or pi over two. So if you press second window, you could switch the independent variable from auto over to ask. And now what this does is it wipes out the table so if we look at our function x squared minus 9 over x minus 3, let's say I want to investigate what's going on in the neighborhood of 3, and I want to plug in values close to 3, like decimal values such as 2.5, maybe 2.8, maybe I want to plug in 2.9. You'll notice that our y values are all fractions. To get rid of that, just press mode, and you go down to answers here. You're going to switch it over from auto back to decimal. And now if we look at the y values, now we have nice decimals. Maybe I want to plug in something like 3.01. And once again, the benefit of this is that we can investigate things such as limits, or maybe we just need a function value that's not an integer value of x. So this is just a useful trick for getting a custom table of values. So now let's learn another trick, how to adjust the window settings. If I type in this new function here for y1, an exponential function, e to the x over 2, minus 30, and I press graph, you'll notice that this graph does not look like an exponential graph. So what I would do is I would press second graph and go to the table. I cleared out the values from before and notice our table is blank. So I need to press second window and I need to switch the independent variable back to auto. So now when I press second graph, notice my table, I'm starting at x equals zero and going to x equals 10 and my y values go from negative 29 to almost 120. So what I would do here is I would go to the window and I would change my y minimum from negative 10 to negative 30 because that'll capture the smallest y value we had in the table. And then this, I would bump up to 120. And now when I press graph, you can see we have a much clearer picture here that this is an exponential function. Now this space over here in quadrants two and three is kind of wasted space. So maybe what I would do next is I would switch the x minimum to zero. And now I press graph, and this is a much better picture of our function. Now the next trick I wanna show here is how to use the vars function shortcut. So let's say I look at a new function for y1 here, and if we press second graph, notice our table is back to normal. And let's say I wanna find the average rate of change of our function from x equals three, which gives us this wacky y value here, all the way down to x equals five, which gives us this wacky y value. So this trick is pretty helpful because in this scenario here, if I look back at those decimal values again, you don't wanna to have to copy this decimal and then this decimal all over again, especially in the free response section of the test. So what you wanna do here is you're gonna press alpha y equals enter. And let's say I wanna find the average rate of change of the function from x equals three to x equals five. So if we call this function f of x, I would need to do f of five minus f of three over five minus three. But the way I could just type in function values is I press vars, I go to the right and I select function and our function is typed in the y1 spot. So if I wanna find the function at five, I put a parenthesis five, I close it. And now let's say I wanna find the function at five minus the function at three. I would press minus and I go and I press vars. I go to the right, I press function y1. And this is going to, if y1 equals f of x, this is going to tell the calculator to find f of five minus f of three. And now I wanna find the average rate of change. So I'm also gonna divide by five minus three. I press enter and the calculator will do this very nicely. And then from this step, you could round. Now, the next thing I wanna show is how to calculate a derivative and an integral using the calculator. So let's say our new function in the y1 spot is something awful like this. So let's say I wanna calculate the derivative of y1 
and I'm allowed to use a calculator. So you could do power rule and chain rule and more chain rule, but the better way to do this is we're gonna press math eight and we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x of our function y1. Now, I don't feel like retyping that, so I'm gonna press vars, I'm gonna go to the right, I'm gonna press function and I'm gonna press y1 and I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. And now what this will do is if I press zoom six and put this back to normal, notice the graph in blue is a graph of our original function and the graph in red is a graph of our derivative. And what I could do is I could turn off the first graph. So this is another trick. How do you turn off the graph? You press enter on the equal sign. And the nice thing about this is you don't actually have to delete this to make the graph go invisible. Just pressing enter on the equal sign will kind of like deselect it here so that when we look at the graph, now we're just gonna get a graph of our derivative. And now what we could do is if I wanna find the derivative at a specific point, I have a bunch of set values here, but let's say I want a decimal value what I could do is switch the calculator from auto over to ask. And if I type in something here like x equals 2.5, I could find my derivative at x equals 2.5. Now you could also do this on the main screen here. So if I wanted to take the derivative on the main screen, I could press math eight. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. And we took the derivative of the function y1. And let's say I want it specifically at x equals 2.5. So if you want specific values of the derivative on your main screen, you could type them in here and notice that it does match the value that we found in our table. This will round it, but if we look at the Y2 value here, it's gonna match what we have on the main screen. So next, let's say I wanna find the integral of our function. I would press math nine, and we're going from X equals, let's say zero to three of the function Y1. Now remember the shortcut, I just press vars, I go to the right, and I have function Y1. And I just type in the X here because we're taking the integral of a function of X, and I press enter. And the calculator is really nice for also evaluating integrals. So math nine is the way to do it. Now let's say I wanna do this graphically. I would go back to y equals, and I'm gonna turn the first graph on, and I deselected y2 for the derivative, so that we're just looking at the first graph here. And I press graph, and here's our original graph. And if I wanna find the area under the curve from x equals zero to x equals three, so that it's more visual, I would press second trace, number seven here. And I'm going from x equals zero, to x equals three. And you'll see that it'll highlight it and we have 10.314347 and this matches what we have here on the main screen. Now this also works for derivatives. I could press second trace number six and before we found the derivative at x equals 2.5. And if we do this, notice that it gives us dy dx also on the graph. So it's just a matter of preference. If you'd rather find these values here on the graph or on the main screen, that's up to you but that slope that we just found matches what we had when we had a graph of y2 as well. So these are just two options. Now the next thing I wanna look at here is the zoom box feature. So let's say I use the functions natural log x and x minus three, and I'm gonna press zoom six, we'll put the graph back to standard here from negative 10 to 10 and from negative 10 to 10. And let's say I wanna find the area between these curves, but notice there's like a little gap here between natural log and x minus three. So what I like to do is I press zoom number one, that's the zoom box. And then this part here is just like you're cropping a photo. So let's say I drop down here like this, a little bit under, I press enter once, and then I go up and over, and it's gonna draw out a rectangle. But what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna highlight the portion of the graph that I need. And when I press enter, it's gonna redraw it with just the highlighted section that we care about. And now if I wanna find the point of intersection here, I would press second trace number five, and I'm gonna go a little bit before that point of intersection. So I gotta do this part very carefully here. So I go before the point of intersection and we're at this value here. I press enter once, I scroll to the right and now I press enter a second time and then a third time and it's gonna give us this point of intersection. But let's say I wanna save this value. So here's the next trick. How do you save values once you find a point of intersection? I would press second mode and I'm gonna press second minus here for the answer and there's the answer there, but let's say I don't feel like retyping this. What I'm gonna press next is the store button, and I'm gonna press alpha math so that I could store this as the letter A. And what this does is every time I press alpha math, and let's say I do alpha math giving me A plus, let's say I wanna add one to this, is that the calculator is gonna recognize the letter A as this decimal so that I don't have to keep retyping this over and over. And now let's say I care about the other point of intersection here. So I'm gonna press second trace number five. And now I'm gonna scroll all the way to the other end of the graph here. 
So we're going over to this section and let's say I want both points of intersection or at least the X values. I press enter once, I scroll past the point of intersection, I press enter a second time, then a third time, and this is my other value of X. So I'm gonna press second mode, second minus sign for the answer. And now I'm gonna store this since A is taken, we'll press alpha apps and store this as the letter B. So then here, if I wanna find the area between the curves, I have the log function or natural log on top and I have X minus three on bottom. So I'm gonna have the top minus the bottom, that's Y1 minus Y2. And what I could do is I press math nine and I'm going from alpha math, I'm going from A to B since we just found our two points of intersection. And once again, I'm doing Y1, so I'm doing vars going to the right, we have function Y1 minus the bottom function Y2. And now we're just gonna press X here. And what this will do is it'll find the area between the two curves and it'll be very clean. It's gonna give us the entire decimal or at least where the calculator will keep going until. And it'll give us a pretty accurate answer here. And if we round this to the nearest thousands place, we'd have 5.694. Thanks for sticking it out to the end. If there were any tips or tricks that I missed, please do us all a favor and write them in the comment section below.